Hey, how's it going everyone? Justin again, as always. Thanks for watching my channel. Welcome back. Story time. So today I figured I would share with you pretty much every service car and toolbox or cabinet that I've owned one way or another throughout my entire automotive profession of almost nine years or probably around nine years now. I figured I'd start off from the beginning, share with you some of the storyline leading up to what it is that I currently own, and then I'll give you guys my final end thoughts. So that being said, let's go for a trip down memory lane. All right, so I started off at a community college and I was working at Sears Auto Center, so I picked up the five drawer matte red service cart, which worked out pretty well, but it was a little overcrowded, didn't have enough room. So then I stepped it up to this uh, Costco brand Torin toolbox where I had plenty of room and it was perfect for college. However, I still needed a toolbox at work at Sears. So I bought this Craftsman. This Craftsman was kind of like my career box. I really loved this box, man. I had it completely decked out and stickered. Uh, you know, and it just, it, it had so much character, so many memories behind this thing. And it was like to be my career box. And I was really excited about it. I think I spent about 800 or 900 bucks. I got a discount too, because I worked there. Well, then I went to Ford. I moved down here to the lower desert, started at Ford. Uh, I was at Ford for about four months or so, but you know, I needed to uh, work on cars. So I had my toolbox there and tragedy would strike. I left a couple of too many drawers open. It got top heavy, it flipped over, and <coughs> tools all over the shop. Well, I was living out of my car at the time. This was a 1979 uh, Pontiac Catalina that I'd purchased from a friend for 500 bucks. And that was mainly because I couldn't afford payments on my Dodge Ram that I had. And I ended up, uh, you know, because I had just gotten divorced, I didn't have enough money. I was making $10 an hour, plus child support was being taken out, so I sold it to family. Family took over payments for me. They've been good, you know, they've been good to me all this time. They took over payments, paid the truck off. I didn't have to worry about it anymore, never affected my credit. Well, I still needed a box, so I got this Cornwell service cart. And I wasn't able to fit even half of what it was that I had inside that Craftsman box. So I got talked into buying a Snap-on KRL series toolbox from the Snap-on rep. I qualified for it and I went ahead and I sunk my teeth in. I was like, yeah, man, I'm in it to win it. Uh, this is my career. I'm going to step it up. So I bought this extreme green Snap-on box, the Rhino line top, payments of like 200 bucks a month. Well then, you know, I ended up losing that job, moving over to the high desert, and I got a job at Chrysler. After working with a tow company for a little while, I got my shoe in at Chrysler, so I needed tools again. So I got this little cart, because I had sold the snap-on box that I couldn't afford after I lost my job at Ford, and I ran out of this little black service cart for a while until it filled up. Then I moved into this Home Depot special that I picked up for 350 bucks during Christmas time. The thing held out great, but again, it started to get a little bit overcrowded. I was running out of room, so I bought a stand-up cabinet. This Husky stand-up cabinet, I think, cost me about 200 bucks, and it fit everything else. And this was my setup, guys. This thing really worked, this whole setup. Then the lock failed, so then I had to bring uh, the Bumblebee home, and I went into this little monster service cart with the stand-up locker. And I was able to actually fit every tool into that monster service cart that I had in my Dewalt just to kind of give you the size difference of the service cart compared to this big old DeWalt box. So the DeWalt box locks were broke. Some of the glides were sticking. I left it at home. Well, then I ended up buying this Cornwall toolbox because the service cart at work was just not big enough to suit my needs and I still needed to lock all my tools. And then I ended up going to an independent shop where I still needed a bunch of tools. So I built myself a hutch. The hutch came out great. All the subscribers sent me license plates, which really helped in that process. Well, then I left the independent shop, went back to the dealership down the hill, and I needed a diagnostic cart. So I bought this diagnostic cart. I had my Cornwall box. I got rid of the hutch. And then I ended up going back to the independent shop, and I ended up with just needing nothing more than a service cart because now everyone shares amongst themselves, like I said in previous videos. All right, guys. So that was a blast from my past, showing you pretty much every single service cart that I'd ever owned all the different types of places that I've worked at throughout the years. You know, I hope I covered most of the stuff that had happened along the way to kind of give you an idea of where I was going with uh, purchasing all these damn toolboxes and service carts to begin with. Basically what it came down to was I always started off with a service cart. And then when I could afford to, I moved it up to a toolbox. 
And then I would get a little bit ahead of myself and I could no longer afford the toolbox. So I ended up having to step away from that and back into a service cart until I can afford a big toolbox again. And then back down to the service cart and then back up to the big old toolbox again. And now I'm back down at a service cart. So long story short, I really hope this made a little bit of sense to somebody out there that look, man, I'm working at the independent shop now. I've been there about a year and a half and I solely function out of nothing more than that Matco service cart. Now don't get me wrong, I've got a ton of tools. I really do. But most of the guys in the shop own duplicates of everything that I own. And rather than mix it up and play who brokes what's uh, and what's mines and all this other stuff, we I just narrowed it down. I just limited myself to what it was that I have because everyone shares with each other as it is. And then, you know, stuff gets missing or lost. We pretty much know who has what. And, you know, it's uh, they're, they're honest people. It, they've, they've been great to me. I've loved working with them. And I've never had a need to have every single thing with me at that shop. Uh, when I first got there, I didn't know what to expect, and I barely knew them, and I really had no uh, trust. Trust had not built up yet for me. Being back there a second time and being there as long as I have, they're like family to me now. I trust them with everything that I got there. I know that they're going to you know, be honest, that they're good, honest people, and those are the kind of people that you really want to work with. Uh, but at any rate... Main point to this whole video is, guys, look, if you're out there and you're trying to deliberate and battle, look, it really depends on the situation and your work environment, depends on your financial situation. At the dealership, nobody shared nothing, so I needed everything. At the independent shop, everybody shares everything, so I hardly need anything. And that can be the same exact thing said at the lube shop that I was at. Everybody pretty much shared what somebody else didn't have, but occasionally there'd be some loose fingers and things would tend have a tendency of walking away. That's all I got for this video. I hope it helped somebody. Thanks as always for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Deuces.